interested in learning more about adding humic acid for to your cannabis plants, you've come to the right place here at Tobacco University, where here we're going to discuss this very topic. All right, let's get into using humic acid for cannabis production. So first off, what is humic acid? Probably should just in generally just define that. Uh, humic and fulvic acids are the final breakdown components of decaying plants and animals found in prehistoric deposits. One source of humic acids is the sedimentation of layers found in liardenite. And it's kind of this kind of fine uh, powdered black uh, granulated form. This organic matter has not reached the state of coal, but it kind of has some properties, or at least feels similar to coal, and it differs from soft brown uh, coal by its high oxidation degree, as in, as a result, the process of coal formation has no value as fuel. So this is not going to like burn like coal, uh, but if you looked at it and didn't quite know what it was, it has some similarities to like a very finely granulated coal product. Now we're looking at the research article here where they looked at the impact of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and humic acid supplementation, looking at the chemical profile of medical cannabis. And again, I'm just gonna provide a brief overview. Here's the link, you can learn more about it. So humic acid and THC levels. Well, for example, the following uh, humic acid applications, THC levels at the top of the plant was reduced from 11.8 to 7.4%. And consequently, concentrations throughout the plant um, height did not differ significantly. So if we're looking just again at the THC, the top, center, and bottom portions of the plant definitely seemed like there was a reduction, which kind of seems a little odd. Here's our commercial phosphorus, potassium, here's our humic acids, that there's an overall, this reduction uh, from 11.8 to 7.8% THC levels. So a little bit concerning here if we're looking at trying to maximize some cannabinoids. Uh, also see here with CBD and CBG, some of the differences that occurred. Uh, that's just a clear indication of what ha occurred with just THC levels. Again, more data here if you want to investigate or pause the video right now. Uh, so going on to the impact of humic acids. Well, the nutrition treatments were supplemented with humic acid, enhanced phosphorus fer fertilization, or enhanced nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Humic acid was found to reduce the natural uh, variability of all of the cannabinoids studied. So that's just kind of concerning there. The results demonstrate sensitivity of cannabinoid metabolism to mineral nutrition. So you want to be mindful that adding more uh, inputs to your plants may not get you always more return. Now there's nutrients impact on the cannabinoids. So um, phosphorus enhanced uh, treatment did not affect THC, CBD, CBN, or CBG concentrations in the flowers from the top of the plants. A 16% reduction of THC concentration was observed in inflorescent leaves though. It's an important note. The complete NPK supplementation increased CBG levels in the flowers by 71% and lowered CBN levels in both flowers and inflorescent leaves by 38 and 36% respectively. So this is also where it comes important as growers to understand what cannabinoids specifically you're looking to produce or maximize because that can impact what fertilizers or what treatments uh, you might give to your plants uh, rather than just trying to eh, try something uh, and hope for better results. So looking at targeting specific compounds and how they are influenced by the uh, inputs that the grower utilizes you can see here has a great impact. We don't want to do anything that's going to increase cost and time and labor that's going to cause a reduction in yield. So be an informed grower, do your research, and make educated decisions on anything you choose to add.